Hey, what's up, Scott Ball? Come here with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're breaking down the inverse square law and why it matters to you. So we're gonna be talking about the inverse square law in just a moment, but before I do, I wanna take a moment to ask that you click subscribe to this channel so you can be a part of the growing filmmaking community. And go ahead and tell about three friends about this channel as well. Let's grow this community. Also, I do have a Patreon if you wanna support me that way. It really helps. Now, how many know what the inverse square law ooh, is? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I do. Square. Inverted. Ha! No, that's not it. Can you maybe think about these things before you do them? So the inverse square law is math that applies to light output over distance and also gravity, but we won't be covering gravity on this series. Ooh, I know how to demonstrate gravity. Not covering gravity. So while you can run the equation every single time and unlock math level four. Yeah! Yeah, mom, I got math level four! What you really need to take from it is far more simple. The inverse square law states that when you double the distance from your light source to your subject, the light intensity will be two full stops lower or about a quarter of as bright. Now we're gonna cover stops of light in a future episode, so don't worry. What that means is if you measure the light output at your subject as a thousand lux and the light is five feet away, moving that light to a distance of 10 feet will result in the light output being measured at about 250 lux. If you move the light to 20 feet, the output would be measured about 62 lux. This seems to go against logic, but it's true. It's math. Math. Now this is something you need to know and master, and while it isn't difficult to master, learning to use it to your advantage is where this comes in handy. The key will be using distance to your advantage. Now, if you remember from our previous episode, as we move a light further and further away from the subject, the light becomes harder, because the light source appears smaller to the subject. But now let's throw a curveball because unless you control that light, as you pull the light further and further back, it light output decreases measured at the subject, but it also can appear softer as well. Wait, what? Didn't I just say it gets harder? Yes, I did, and it's correct. And it's getting softer. That is also correct. See, what happens is when you pull the light back, the spread of that light is increased while the light output is decreased. The specular is now wider on the subject, and all that extra light is spilling on the surroundings and it's reflecting back to your subject. This light tends to fill in the shadows, causing it to appear softer. Controlling light output will be covered in an upcoming episode, so that'll be exciting. So how does the inverse square law come in handy? Well, let's suppose you have a scene where you wanna shoot your main actor at F4, so you can get that shallow depth of field. You measure your light output at your subject and it says you need to shoot at F8. Well, you need to lower the output of that light. But what if that light changes color when dimmed like a tungsten bulb and you don't have a scrim? Well, you can simply move that light twice the distance from the subject and instantly you save the day. Okay, maybe you didn't save the day and maybe that example was a little too unnecessary to be solved in that way. Let's look at a different problem. My key light right over here, it's about five feet from me and it looks great. However, if I introduce you to my new friend, now you can immediately notice that my friend here is now way overexposed compared to me. He just doesn't look right. So if I need to be able to have two people lit with one light, then I need to push that light way back. And why push it back and not just dim it? Well, right now my friend is about two stops brighter because the distance he is to the light is about half the distance that I am. Ah, uh, math? Yeah, math. So let's move this light back and see what happens. So I've moved that light about 10 feet away, but now we're both really dim. Why? Well, if you remember, that light output is now decreased by a factor of four. So let's brighten that up a little bit. Now my friend here is still a little closer to the light, but he's only a little more than about half a stop brighter because of the inverse square law. Math. Yes, math. So I hope this explanation helped you understand the cause and effect distance has on light and how you can use it to your advantage. Now, as always, if you have any questions or comments, do feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I do try to read and respond to each and every one, even if it's just to say thank you. And don't forget about the SB50 Cinematography Challenge alternating on this channel and Bill Howard's channel every Friday. You can find more information about it on our challenge Facebook group, the SB50 Cinematography Challenge. 
You can follow me on the social media at Scott Balkum. And I do have a Patreon if you wish to support me that way because I appreciate each and every one of my supporters. They really do help me make great content just like this. Alternatively, if you wish to support me via Amazon, you can purchase anything you need by clicking one of my affiliate links below. Every little bit helps. Now please remember to give me a thumbs up and remember to click that subscription button and the little alert bell that's next to it. This is a growing community of filmmakers and storytellers and we really do think you'd be a great part. That little alert bell will notify you every time I upload a video or when I live stream, which is another way I answer your questions. Now, if you really love me, tell three of your friends about this channel and let's see how fast we can grow. And as I always like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life, let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.